Hello and welcome. In this video we will cover how you can realize comprehensive three-way forecasting and planning solutions with Actaris, Power BI and Excel. Some of the methods are generic, others will require Actaris. The approach that we are using unifies data warehousing, data discovery and planning in one solution. This can lead to dramatic increases in process efficiency not just compared to typical Excel-only Excel processes, but even compared to specialized planning applications that typically will only cover the planning aspect well, and then create a lot of maintenance efforts to integrate data to a separate data warehouse or data discovery solution. We have examples at companies where the demonstrated method has led to reducing the full duration for budgeting and forecasting from weeks to a few days. By three-way financial forecasting, we're referring to the underlying logic that links income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow. For example, when you plan a sale, the balance sheet will be updated with the logic to change receivables and potentially also consider payment terms to convert the receivables to cash and all other transactions that are typically associated with it. Finally, the cash flow statement will reflect exactly the cash implications and will provide the user with an exact picture of expected future cash flows at any point in time. The underlying data model for this demo is a standard relational star schema created in the Actaris modeler, either completely automatic from the supported accounting systems or populated using an ETL process. This model is controlled and edited by business users. They can, for example, add new scenarios or edit any other element of the model. This model can then be accessed with any front end that can access relational databases, for example, Power BI, with all the functionality. If I click on an object, um, all the related objects automatically adapt. I can drill down to additional details. But I can also use cool things like custom tooltips where I get for a particular object um, a more detailed report, which in this case shows me the variances. In this custom tooltip, we are using a method called smart ranking. So we are using the dimensions that the user will typically choose to find out more about the variance, for example, product, product groups, time periods, sales territories. And across all these dimensions, we are ranking now by the highest and lowest variance. So at a glance, the user can immediately see which details are driving the negative variance or what details are driving the positive variance in a nicely sorted way, quite helpful for planning applications and very easy to implement in Power BI. Also helpful in the planning process are collaboration features. Here we can see the Actaris comments visual that allows users to add which text comments to the particular context and explain, for example, particular planning assumptions and share feedback with their team members. So, this was just a brief overview to demonstrate the benefits of a data discovery integrated approach that, as we will see, can take planning processes to a completely new level. So let's have a look how it's done. Um, so from here, I can immediately jump to all elements of the planning process. For example, um, OPEX operational expenses. So this will lead me now to a new Power BI report in this case, which contains different elements. So we can see here the Hectares matrix that allows you to drill down selectively to any level of your hierarchy to give us a bit of an idea what was the situation in the previous quarter. But we also have other elements here are the typical Power BI elements to give the planner an idea at any stage what are the implications for key ratios, for example, on the gross margin percentage in this case and the profit percentage, a summary um, overview, um, approval processes. So here we've connected Power Apps based approval processes that also link Microsoft Flow. So this means when somebody submits their planning process, it will go to the next stage. This manager can then approve or reject. In my case here, I'm a manager, I can 
reject a particular submission or approve it. The collaboration as we had before to uh, add comments, but then also expense items. So what we see here now are the um, OPEX items, so revenues and expenses. Let's switch to the new quarter. So we are assuming here a rolling forecast planning process. So now I can see those are the items for the quarter three and I can see I already have items here and the reason for this is um, we are automatically taking into account recurring items. So you only have to set up these once and they will automatically um, be projected forward and this is particularly around capex items and depreciation labor so we have a separate hr section where you can manage all your hr expense we will show you this and then that obviously continues to be um, part of the expense so that is automatically projected forward but um, for these for the items that are not projected forward we can then immediately enter our numbers for example we can assume in the new third quarter we will have equipment expenses of 120,000 and just enter this this way so what we see here now is that it tells us here this was a splashing operation and splashing means we've entered data on an aggregated level so let's refresh now and see what are the updated results so we can now see the 120,000 are still there but as we will see when we go into the detail this was automatically split into the underlying periods. So what we just did was an entry on an aggregated level. But if we want to, we can also do this on the, on the detail level. So we can say, oh no, here for some reason we will have 50,000 and I can just enter my number here. And as you can see, this has been automatically in real time. And this is again the big power of the approach that we're taking in real time. You can see immediately the results. You can see how your metrics change and so on. If you want to, let's say, for example, for entertainment expenses, this is now another Power Apps, the users can break it down. So they can say, I know I will have a conference um, in the first period of the quarter, um, and this will cost $10,000. And as you can see, it automatically takes my username, so I can put here conference. And now I have a detailed plan with as many items as I want for this particular item. If I like, I can add another one and have a reference to how did I get to this value. So I can now add um, another thing, for example, marketing campaign in this period, marketing campaign, and add this as well. So now I'm finished here, I can just again press uh, refresh and I will then immediately see what's the new situation. So we can see now in the um, expenses that the entertainment expenses are now automatically there in the, in the total amount. If I click on this, my visual here will automatically show me the details. And I also have the uh, equipment expenses that we've planned before. So this was just a quick overview of how it works um, in Power BI. For those among you that prefer Excel, I cannot click here and immediately get to my spreadsheet. So this is now the spreadsheet version. So it links, this is a pivot table that links to the exactly the same data model. I can now press refresh here and all the changes from the Power BI will automatically update here. And now we can see immediately, so our entertainment expenses of 30,000 and the equipment is here as well with uh, the 40,000, 50,000, 40,000, so 130,000 in total uh, for the entire period, uh, the moment expenses of 246,000. So here, for those among you that prefer Excel, you have now all the flexibility in Excel. So I could say here I'm planning um, the marketing expenses, let's say 
hundred thousand um, dollars a month just enter the my information here now we have all the features we have in Excel just uh, copy and pasting dragging data including formula so I could not say here for the conference I want to use a percentage of 20% of my marketing budget and what I can do like in Excel you can use any Excel formulas so I could just say here F31 and we assume 20% times 0.2 is my marketing collateral and again just drag this down and when I'm finished I can just press commit so this means these changes will be committed to the database I can immediately again see here what were the um, what's the new result in real time again how does this affect my total expenditures my profits and so on so now we can see the total expenditure has gone up to this I can see this also on a visual level what we haven't done though yet is the trade sales side so let's have a quick look at that as well so here we have now an overview of the sales this is in quarter one but we are planning now for quarter three so let's um, select the quarter three here and we can see that's at the moment completely empty so what we can do now here is we could now start entering data on you know whatever level we like obviously the entire model is available to us here um, we could do this by um, salesperson you know any detail that is required but we could also make it a bit easier and start with numbers from previous periods so what I can do in Actaris I can copy and move data pretty much any way you like so let's assume we want to copy the quarter to data and use that as our basis for the new quarter we don't want to do this for all product we want to do this for the sale amount we want to do this for all employees so we want to copy the budget from the previous quarter into the new quarter we could do the same thing for actuals if we want to as well or any other scenario but let's assume here we want to do this for budget so i want to copy from budget to the budget scenario and i want to do this now to the quarter three so let's select the, this time hierarchy for quarter three um, again this should go to all product and for the sales amount this is all it takes and you will see now the power of the carries engine it took two seconds and we've copied a few ten thousand records so I have here now the data of the previous quarter but we did this for every single sales rep for every single product uh, product grouping all this is here now so let's have a look and see what the total results are so we can see now we have a, a grand total of um, 2.5 million in the first month in the second month again 2.5 and in the last month a little bit lower 2 million to give us an overall total of 7 million so let's assume here we have a bit of a, a problem and we expect that the market will go down so let's assume we have a 30 percent decrease in revenue and again we commit this back to the database again you see this took less than a second to update let's see now what the new totals are and again in just a few seconds um, I can exactly see what are the implications for every single product group but then also drill down to a particular product and even down to the single sales reps if we want to see now uh, David Campbell's results this is um, what they are and obviously I cannot change this so I know David will have a hell of a sale for the lock ring in September so let's say he will sell 30,000 here so I can put now the data on the lowest level again commit this back to the database and could now immediately see how does this affect the overall sales So these are the results now. So this is Excel. Let's switch back to Power BI. 
So here we see an overview of the current situation. We see now our targets, the black bars, so about um, five million dollars revenue and um, 1.2 million dollars of profit. And we can also see the forecasted results. Obviously, as we don't have actuals yet, the forecast is the same as the budget, and we can see the, the budget amounts. So, but let's look um, at a few more details. Initially, just have a quick look at the sales side of things in Power Bear. We obviously have already done our planning now with Excel. So all the numbers that we entered in Excel, the increases and so on, they're all here. Just to quickly show you, obviously I can now, in the same way as we've shown you before, um, enter data here on any level and overwrite what we had um, from Excel. But um, also some of the cool things, when I click on something, I can immediately see here where are currently the sales for this particular um, product or product group and everything else automatically adapts and also gives me um, the details here. So just the cool Power BI features. But let's move now to the next area of planning, to um, HR planning. Obviously a very important part of things. And here again, we're using uh, a Power Apps that um, has uh, the logic and that automatically updates the Icarus model. So here we have now all our employees. I have now very uh, good search options here and can filter on the employees that I want to see. I can edit my employees as we've discussed This will be automatically taken into account in the budget. So if I add employees or If I add roles or if I have existing employees, they will automatically project forward based on the hire date so um, If I want to I could add now Mary's rate and um, specify that she works now 30 hours a week or change her rate as well, give her a little bit of a, of a raise. And this will automatically change the HR expenses from that point going, going forward. What I can also do is I can add new employees. So I can specify particular positions that have already been set up in the Actarius model. I can specify a rate for this position. I can say how many hours they work. I can either now specify a particular person or I can say, I don't know those people yet. I know I will hire them in a particular period. Let's say we hire them um, on 3rd of September and I will need five of them. So this will now update the database and add the respective records automatically in the Actiaris model. And again, if I press refresh, I can immediately see what's the, what's the change. So we now have 400 employees. I can see the details now again in an Ateris matrix that I can uh, um, slice and dice in whatever way um, you need. So drill down to the particular people's name if I want to and see exactly the um, expenses uh, in that space. We're also using drivers here that you just add the specific percentage in the Actaris model and that will automatically calculate the on cost. So let's have a quick look at how this is done. So Actaris automatically integrates um, into Power BI. So from here I can immediately access the Actaris modeler. And the users can here edit the drivers and parameters that are used um, in the planning model. So I can see here we have the payroll tax here. And if I, if I want to, I can immediately add new on-cost components or edit existing assumptions. So let's go back to our planning reports. And the next item that I would like to cover is CapEx. So um, in capital expenses, we can plan our capital expenditure. So items that we use for uh, longer periods, um, use for life periods and so on. So let's assume here we're planning to build a new manufacturing plant and we enter now the details here. Let's say we're doing this in the US. This is US 1 and it's a, it's a plant. And so this is the US plant and the installation date 
is in our current period 2018. Sorry, 20 is 2017. And let's assume the 1st of July. And we're planning here an investment of $3 million. And the salvage value is like 100,000. And the useful life is 50 years. So, um, this is now the, the new transaction, um, the new capex item, which is now in the list of the um, capex items. We can um, immediately see also some of the overview metrics here for the new investments and so on. But the interesting side is now, and this brings us to the place where everything comes together, can we afford this and what does this mean for our cash flow? So in the cash flow everything comes together, so all the income that we've planned for, the expenses that we've planned for um, are coming together and we can have a look at the situation now. Let's refresh and see what the current situation is. So, and here we can see now our situation. The uh, light blue line here shows the cash movement and the green one the cash balance. And we see we have a little bit of a problem, not too much, it's just $46,000 short, but we definitely have a problem in um, from October onwards when we will go into the negative cash territory. So what we can do now is we can now plan for this and either increase our assumptions for sales, but for the moment let's do this looking at another area, at the debt and finance management, which is also covered in Actaris. So here we can manage all our financing. So at the moment we can see we've got already two facilities here, but and we want to add a new one. So to make up for the shortfall in the period that we're planning for at the moment in, in 2017. So let's select the start periods. And we saw already we had a bit of a shortcoming in um, at the beginning of our planning quarter. So um, let's plan for the facility in the beginning of this quarter. And let's assume we, we saw we needed about um, three million dollars um, until the end of the year. So let's um, assume we will have a bridge loan. Um, in uh, July, uh, we take this for 12 months. Um, the interest we assume is 70% and um, we need 3 million. So, this new facility is now there. Let's have a look and see what effect does this have on our cash flow. And refresh again. So, we see now the situation and we still have a bit of a problem in um, in December, where we have again a shortfall of, of um, around $600,000, so we will likely need another facility to really um, increase our sales. But let's leave this as is for the moment and look at um, more at the governance side of things. All aspects of the process are controlled by workflow, so we saw before when you submit your report, um, this becomes part of a workflow and the admin is always in control of what's going on. So we can see these two entities have um, submitted their budget and was approved. These entities have submitted but was not yet approved and these entities haven't done anything. So we could now immediately communicate with them, ask them what's going on and ensure that um, our budget is complete. One thing that's important as well is audit trail. A very important topic as you want to be in control what's happening in the planning model. So with Sectaris, every single transaction is recorded. This is not just data entry. 
this is any operation. So if someone copies data, if someone builds new models, if someone changes dimensions, all this is um, recorded. So you have, you have a complete trail of uh, what's going on. And you avoid things like in, in, in Excel-only based solutions where someone overrides a formula or delete something by chance. This can't happen here. I mean, of course, because uh, we don't store the logic in the data entry sheet. We have a, a central model where all the calculation logic is stored. So the typical user couldn't um, affect this anyway. But still, um, you want to see what users are doing. You also protect it with the approval process that after the uh, budget has been approved, um, the carriers will, carriers will prevent the write back. But still, you want to be in control and see who has done what. And you have no exact control. You can now filter by users. You can filter by the data model and exactly see what have users done here. So, yeah, this was just a brief overview of how you can realize freeway forecasting and planning in a bit of a new way, directly seamlessly integrated into state-of-the-art data discovery solutions. We see now a little bit that other vendors are also offering um, solutions that integrate into Power BI, but be very careful here because very often this is just running a website inside um, Power BI and the, all of the power of Power BI gets lost because then this uh, web page that contains some kind of planning functionality is completely unrelated to what's happening in Power BI. So uh, if you filter something in Power BI, if you want to see how something affects um, something else, all this is not possible. So really make sure when uh, somebody uh, tells you they have an, a Power, Power BI integrated planning solution that uh, it really is seamlessly integrated. It uses the same data store here and it carries everything is built on one version of the truth unified data model. So this concludes this quick demonstration as usual. Please, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us.